It's Tuesday, August 16th. From inside the WTOP newsroom, this is the DMV Download, brought to you by the men and women of Steamfitters Local 602. Get an estimate and learn more at steamfitters-602.org. Restaurants are struggling to survive. It's two and a half years after the pandemic, COVID is still keeping some customers who are still working from home from spending a few bucks on coffee or lunch. You also may have noticed you're waiting longer to get your food or even to get a drink when you go to your favorite spot. The staffing shortage coupled with the rising cost of food is hitting local restaurants hard. If I was to pass these expenses straight to the consumer, you'd be talking about, you know, $50 pizza or $20 for six wings. Today, I talk with two restaurant owners who are so beloved by WTOP listeners, they were voted among the best of the best in our region. And they say the difficulty of finding and keeping staff coupled with the rising cost of rent and food have them confronting some tough decisions. They, they're not coming to work for $15 an hour. I mean, yeah, the minimum wage is 15 14 but nobody comes for $15 or $16 an hour. Thanks for listening. I'm Megan Cloherty. Luke is off this week. Almost as soon as we got our heads around the idea that the pandemic was changing our world in 2020, many turned their attention to supporting the businesses they rely on in normal times to ensure they'd be there when COVID ended. Whether it has ended is still up for debate, of course, but restaurant owners will tell you it's still hard to stay open and the outpouring of customer support has waned. Joining me now is Ramesh Zadeh. For 15 years, she's owned Siena's in Rockville, which just took home WTOP's best vegetarian vegan restaurant congratulations <laughs> thank you i mean almost 15 years like i i, I believe it's 14 14 something so i'm gonna say 15 <laughs> i was gonna say you've earned it um yeah she she's rest she's actually manning her restaurant phones right now as she's talking to us from her restaurant ramesh we were talking earlier about how difficult it's been can you tell us how you've been coping with just the stress of the last two years uh, people are thinking that we've gone back to before covid um Absolutely, I'm not feeling that way because of uh, not having enough employees and or the one that they have, like they have to pay high rate and, mm. and the, you know, the supplies that we are buying it is a, more than as twice as before. I was going to ask you about that, the, the rising cost of food. Um, you know, give us an example, because we all see at the grocery store that things are costing more. But when you're buying for a restaurant... There's obviously a bigger purchase and a bigger risk. The customers may not order that. Um, how has inflation affected Sienna's? People are looking at the menu. Like, of course, I changed the menu many times. Uh, but when they're coming over, they are realizing the price is high. And I mean, I don't blame them. It's, it's just they cannot afford it. Sometimes they say, wow, they're paying for it uh, because they would be order it. But uh, I'm always wondering myself if they're coming back. And has the cost of the things you're buying to just stock your restaurant gone up as well? I mean, can you give us an example of that? Um, I used to buy flour like $16, $17, $18. Now I'm buying it for $35, $36. Wow. This is a lot. This is a lot. For flour, like, uh, for a bag of flour. Yeah, the flowers to make a pizza. Like as, if you go back to the percentage, you see it's as twice as before. Yeah. But is there any profit? Uh, um, is there anything I can make out of it? Not that much. Uh, like, I feel like um, I I have a restaurant and just uh, to, uh, you know, some other uh, employees can have the job. Like some other people can have the job. And I'm just working here. It just it's just like it's not easy. It's not really easy. So you're, you, wait, so let me understand what you're saying. You feel like you have the restaurant right now just to support the employees who are working there. You're not really exactly. making a profit. You're not no, able no, to pay because yourself. Of, like, when it comes to like help, I have to call my husband or my family to come and help me. And do they get pay from CNS? No. Is it is it hard? I mean, is part of you thinking, gosh, how long can I do this? I mean, it just seems like you, you were saying you're always there. I, I'm, I'm always here. I don't have... As I, you see in my website, this is the kosher restaurant. I am Jewish. Um, my daughter uh, had a bat mitzvah, but I, I couldn't have the bat mitzvah for her. I couldn't take her anywhere. I couldn't have the party for her. I won't be able to leave Siena's. It just, I have to be here all the time. That must have been really hard. Be that must have been time. really hard for you. I, I mean, uh, uh, there is no life. But we have, and having the restaurant in this kind of uh, situation, there is no life. 
Oh, Ramesh, I'm like getting emotional. No, I'm I'm so sorry, but you know, I I have to tell the truth. I have no, to. No, don't be sorry for me. <laughs> I'm sorry for you. Don't be sorry for me. Um, yeah, you know. Oh, you mentioned staffing. So you have one staffer. Is that what you said? I have like uh, six staffs, uh, but they're working like one or two at a time. And, uh, and there are six of them are part-time. I won't be able to afford to have a full-time uh, staffs. Okay. So, and, and are you ever worried that they will find another job or they won't be? Oh, know? yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. Like my payroll every um, like I pay bi-weekly, uh, paying the same amount of money with the six staff that I have, uh, the same amount of money I used to pay for 10 or 12 staffs. Yeah, because it went up to $15 an hour. It, it's, it's, they, they won't, they're, they're not coming to work for $15 an hour. I mean, uh, the, yeah, the minimum wage is uh, 13, 15, 14. But nobody comes for fifteen or sixteen dollars per hour. Really, you, you have, have to, to keep the cost, You have to keep the, your employees happy to, you know, keep them. Otherwise, they're going to find another job. Um, your business won big, obviously, with this WTOP Top Ten contest as the best vegetarian restaurant. I'm sure every little bit helps. But um, what do you need to change to feel more confident about the about your business's future? <sighs> <laughs> uh, I think if we gone back to the to before pandemic, <laughs> like whatever it was before, unfortunately, I don't see it. I I I, I wish I could uh, say I I see the end of the tunnel, <laughs> but I, I I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> oh gosh! Well, hopefully, we can direct more people to your business. Um, thank you, um, thank you so much to all of my customers who helped me, especially my landlord who gave me a lot of discounts over it. Uh, Otherwise, as I said, I wouldn't be able to make it. <sighs> Ramesh Sade, who owns Sienna's up in Rockville, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for uh, you know having me. Really appreciate it. The staffing shortage in the food industry is not just affecting our region, and their hourly rate is playing into why some are seeking jobs in other industries. Of America's 11.6 million food service workers, including the managers, the average hourly rate is $18.48 an hour, but they generally work just 26 hours a week. That's according to the May 2022 data from the U.S. Bureau of Labor and Statistics. It also noted in January that the restaurant industry's year-over-year quit rate jumped from 4.8% to 6.9%, a larger increase than any other job sector. Armand's Pizza is a favorite in the DMV, voted by WTOP listeners as the best pie in our region. But even with a loyal customer base like that, owner Chris Sapp is here to tell us it's been tough to stay afloat. Chris, thanks for joining me on the road to uh, heading to Blacksburg, I guess. Yes, to Blacksburg, <laughs> dropping my daughter off to school. Congratulations. That's cool. Um, you. So, you know, it kind of hit the headlines here in the last week or so that a lot of well-known places around our region are closing. Green Hat Distillery, Bad Saint, uh, Three Stars Brewing in D.C., just to name a few. I mean, clearly you can't speak for their businesses, but does it surprise you as the owner of a restaurant that we're seeing a spate of restaurants go under now? No, it doesn't surprise me because I've seen some long-term restaurants in my area. Um, One right up the street is getting ready to close next month. Even though they lasted this long? Well, I think the ones that did last through COVID have other issues now with inflation and food costs and uh, customers not coming in to dine in the restaurants is taking a big hit on the revenue. Yeah. Do you think that, I mean, in the beginning of COVID, it seemed like a lot of people were taking that extra step to maybe dine out more outside or get takeout from their favorite restaurants. Are you seeing sort of that overwhelming support wane at this point? Yeah, I think in the beginning of COVID and even, you know, throughout most of it, a lot of the small businesses or independent owned businesses got a, a lot of support. Uh, people would come in or they'd order delivery. Um, but I think everybody, well, maybe not everybody, but a lot of people think that things are getting back to normal, but they, they're just not showing up. And what does that mean for Armand's as far as how you stay afloat? I mean, if nobody's coming, how? How, how are you still in business? Well, the hardest thing is, you know, with with inflation and everything else and food costs, you know, we have to keep raising our prices. We try to keep them at a, a, a comfortable level, but 
you know, at some point it, it's going to get tough and, you know, I don't know how long we'll be able to survive. Um, but, but, you know, cause price increase is not always the answer. Right. You know, with chicken, it, it's up like $2 a pound. Um, wings had almost doubled in price. And if I was to, you know, pass these expenses straight to the consumer, you'd be talking about, you know, $50 pizza or, you know, $20 for six wings, which is just, it's something you can't do because people just won't buy it. So, mm-hmm. you know, you have to just keep pushing forward and, and, and the restaurant just won't make any money. You know, prices just keep going up. I spoke with another uh, restaurant owner and she said that she can't even, I mean, like to keep someone working for her, she has to pay more than the minimum wage. Are you finding the same? Oh, you, uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, we've lost, you know, we had, uh, I'll give you one example. We had a girl person um, that had been with us for, probably 15 years and he got a job at another restaurant because they were so desperate for people they were paying three dollars over minimum wage and how they afforded that i don't know uh the bad thing for him is we just got a call back from him last week looking for hours because they cut his hours because they hired they were able to hire a couple more people so Mm. some places are promising these high high hourly wages but they're only giving it to them temporarily and then they'll take it away, at least in this case. But mm-hmm. we just can't afford to pay much more. But we are paying over minimum wage to a lot of the, the staff. And do things like promotions like this WTOP win obviously is a good thing. It's never bad to be voted best pizza in the DMV. But I mean, did, did the little things like that help? Or But it's not it's I'm guessing it's not enough to keep you alive. Well, these things are great and we're honored that, you know, we got so many votes last year. We uh, were voted number one uh, in MoCo, uh, Montgomery County. We were voted number one pizza. And you do see a, a, a increase in sales for a period of time, a week or two. Mm-hmm. You know, hopefully that'll happen with this. Um, but we do a 1099 one topping special on Mondays. We've gotten so desperate. We've done Tuesdays, we're doing buy one pizza, get one free. So, you you know, if you buy a five topping pizza for $24, you get a $24 pizza for free just to just to get people in the door. Hopefully they like what they get and they come back and, and, and support the local business. So you really have to uh, like still be creative with how you get people in the door. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Chris Sapp, owner of Armand's Pizza. Thanks so much for your time and good luck on 95. <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs> After the break, we continue this week's emerging trend of talking about cookies with the debut of the latest Girl Scout cookie flavor. Backed by the experience of its hardworking members, Steamfitters Local 602 is ready to take on your next commercial heating, cooling, HVAC, or refrigeration project. Steamfitters Local 602 adds value to our community through its partnerships with local contractors and building owners, all while keeping the focus on improving the lives of its members and their families throughout the DMV. For work that's on time and on budget, go to steamfitters-602.org to schedule your next project. That's steamfitters-602.org. Steamfitters Local 602, changing lives. Thanks for listening to the DMV Download. If you like this show, give us five stars and leave us a review on Apple Podcast. We love hearing from you guys, and your reviews really do help other listeners find this, our area's only in-depth daily local news podcast. And thank you for making us a part of your day. So before we go, I'm going to continue my trend of talking about cookies this week for some random reason, because I have breaking cookie news. And to join me to talk about this, I have Abby Russ, who is an intern at our sister station, Federal News Network, and goes to University of Maryland. She's an intern with us now. Thanks for being here, Abby. Thanks for having me. Abby was a Girl Scout, and I was also a Girl Scout. Where were you a Girl Scout? I was a Girl Scout at Defeat Elementary School in North Potomac, Maryland. <laughs> That's very specific. I like it. Okay. And it, did you get to Girl Scout status or are you just a brownie? Um, Not I just was, a brownie. I was Sorry. a daisy and a brownie. So I did it for like seven years. That's pretty good. That's pretty yeah. good. I think I made it to Girl I'm trying to remember. I Yes, I had a green uniform. So I did oh, make it to Girl Scouts. I also had the green uniform. There you actually. go. I liked the sash as well. Yes. With a little. Anyway, I'm getting around <laughs> to the fact that there's a new Girl Scout cookie. And it, they debuted it today. I guess, as you remember, Abby, you, you don't sell cookies until, like, the spring. Yeah. So they're trying to count us down and, like, raise the excitement about this year's newest cookie, which is called Raspberry Rally. Sounds good. I love raspberries. 
I there love any it. chocolate in them? There's chocolate. Okay, so this is what it is. It basically is a Thin Mint. Inspired by Thin Mints, apparently. It's a thin, crispy, raspberry flavor, little, you know, crisp cookie dipped in chocolate coating. Wow. That is definitely something I'm going to have to try. I feel like I mentioned it to three or four people in the newsroom, and every woman was like, oh, that sounds amazing. What's I don't better? know what it is, but... Than chocolate and raspberry. No, there's nothing better. I, I know. I'm very excited. I guess last year the new cookie was called Adventurefuls. I don't know. They, it used to just be like the classic. Samoas, Thin yeah. Mints. Yeah. Well, I feel like Samoas is still my favorite. What's I, your favorite? I'm partial to Thin Mints. Yeah. I mean, those are the, the popular flavors. You can never be friends with a trefoil person, you know? Can't trust them. Tre- <laughs> <laughs> you just can't. You, that can't be your number one flavor. Um, so Raspberry Rally, I guess it's coming out in January, and apparently people are already ordering it online, which I think you should still have to buy from a Girl Scout. I definitely think so, too. I mean, what's better than just going to the Giant and seeing a bunch <laughs> of Girl Scouts lined up outside? Yelling at you, please, please, buy me. They have five dollar cookies. <laughs> anyway, Abby, thank you for indulging me on this. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. And that'll do it for us today on the DMV Download. We are sponsored by Steamfitters Local 602. Our managing editor is Craig Schwab, and our music is by Real World. Give us a review and rate our show if you get the chance, and follow us on social media where we post content every day from behind the scenes of the show. I actually want to hear too what your go to restaurant is that you would just be really upset by if it closed. So we're kind of collecting answers if you want to chime in. You can also find out more about this podcast and become one of our VIP listeners at dmvdownload.com. The DMV Download is a product of WTOP News. Listen on 103.5 FM in D.C., 107.7 FM in Virginia, 103.9 FM in Frederick, Maryland, online at wtop.com and on the WTOP News app. Have a good night.